So, um, thanks for having me. My name is Tim Fitchen. Um, I work at Iniscale GmbH in Göttingen. And uh, I will talk about uh, research data management with Blink ahead today. I'm very happy that you are having me at um, the research data management in Austria um, event series. And so thanks to Alex for the kind introduction. And um, now I guess I will start right away. First, um, I'm currently working on a project called a butt cut that's short for battery cell assembly twin. And um, of course, this is not about research data management or data management uh, in particular, but it's a part of um, this. Um, and the goal of the project is to create a digital twin for battery manufacturing uh, towards new, greener, and more sustainable manufacturing processes. Uh, to quote uh, the Battery 2030 Plus roadmap. Um, this project is funded by the European Union as a Horizon Europe consortium. And um, at Budcut, uh, we have um, 18 or 19 partners. Um, um, the lead is um, the NMBU, Norwegian University of Life Science from Norway. We also have one um, university from Austria, actually, uh, from Klagenfurt. Maybe someone is around today. And of course, yeah, in scale um, at, the, at the bottom, um, we uh, do data management and uh, infrastructure for this project. And in this scale um, is using Link Ahead. Uh, so my company is using link ahead for um, the data management services we provide to the project and we will develop link ahead um, as a federated hierarchical knowledge base uh, during this project um, because uh, we have uh, several partners at different sites using different uh, electronic lab notebooks or different processes to collect data and they need to share their data um, uh, across uh, national institutional boundaries and company boundaries, but um, in a way um, that will um, secure uh, sensitive data, intellectual property rights, uh, regulatory and contractual obligations. And uh, then we will be able to integrate data from experiment the sites into um, this um, shared data space. And uh, we feed the data back into machine learning algorithms and AI training um, and modeling for this uh, digital twin. So, um, but I'm getting ahead of myself about Link Ahead already. So maybe we should start with, um, yeah, maybe a general observation um, about what at least we at IndieScale think um, is a research data management system. A research data management system supports researchers in data management tasks. So we put um, the focus on researchers at, uh, as the users and um, maybe not so much um, the, the public audience in the first place or, um, for instance, um, personnel that is mainly concerned with infrastructure. Structure. So um, research data management really should be um, yeah, focused on researchers and their activities um, according to applicable rules and policies. These might be fair guiding principles, research data policies from the institution, um, for, from the funding um, partners, um, standards and best practices um, from your community or general ones and, um, of course, uh, organizational, legal and individual rules in your institute or in, in your um, workbook. And also by taking into account uh, the conditions, and by that I mean capacities like um, storage capacities, um, uh, bandwidth, uh, and so on. Uh, also taking into account data structure. Uh, file formats and software that is about to be used or that um, is used already and um, establish workflows because researchers um, usually use the, the workflows that work, okay? So um, we don't want to change those um, 
just to, to make it manageable, manageable we, we want to try to adapt uh, the software that manages uh, the research data to the workflows, not the other way around. And um, of course, taking into account legacy data resources, because they can be um, 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 a great treasure if you can't use them. And Lingahat is um, designed around the vision to, to um, ensure all that. So we made uh, Lingahat flexible to be adaptable to different conditions. And um, we made it agile. Um, the, the idea is that you need to um, adapt and change step by step um, and approve uh, iterative, iteratively. Um, I will come back to that. And it should be unobtrusive, meaning researchers determine, uh, determine the workflow and the tools and um, the research data management should be built around that. So um, our idea of Linkhead would be um, if, if there were a physical object uh, doing Linkhead, Linkhead's work, that there is some kind of little robot that um, sorts your stuff while you're away. So your desk is um, full of uh, research data, obviously, some, some papers that need to be scanned and so on. And the researcher is away currently, the Linkhead robot, uh, IndieBot, we call them, um, is uh, plugged into your laptop and yeah, we'll, we'll do the stuff. And uh, when you're back um, with fresh coffee, everything is sorted away and put into the right place and you can go on with your work. Um, maybe looking back, um, Linker had um, was developed since uh, 2011 at um, NPIDS, the Max Planck Institute for Dynamics and Self-Organization in Göttingen, under the former name KSDB, um, which is a, not a good name for marketing, but um, the community was uh, from um, complex system and chaos uh, research. So yeah, that name wasn't, wasn't so upsetting for them. Um, it's used in production since 2016 and was published uh, open source um, in two 2018. Has increasing prevalence since 2020 in several projects um, and use cases, for example, for sample management as a literature database, management of raw data, automation of data process processing um, for laboratory automation, indexing and annotation of data lakes and repositories and uh, many more use cases. Um, as I said, um, open source software since 2018, you can get the code on GitLab. I will have some links at the end. And then there was the company founding um, Indiescale to make uh, the former KSDB and now Linkahead um, a sustainable solution that has um, yeah, a constant uh, maintaining um, community and um, that there are also some services to um, run and develop link ahead if um, uh, the community cannot do this yeah, on their own. So um, in this case, does the data management or data services in general, but link ahead is one of our um, maybe flagship uh, projects. Um, so let's talk about how you would um, use link ahead and let's look about this uh, data data life cycle um, you've seen one I guess many times probably and um, they always look kind of the same of course it's a, it's a cycle and um, we, we may start anywhere but let's start in the lower right corner um, where you might um, collect data um, with ELNs um, or with uh, some um, in-house written software that um, that drives your sensors or your um, I don't know your experiments, and uh, you collect experimental results. Maybe you feed results into numerical simulations. Um, you do 
processing of raw data, data analysis, and uh, at some point you um, you will um, publish some of your data and your results, of course, and your analysis and your um, discussion. And um, this again is um, the source for new ideas, new um, documents, new protocols, new standards, and new research questions, which then again lead to new data being collected and so on, and the cycle goes on and on. And now the idea is that Link Ahead um, is in the middle of that. Um, it's the first software after you collected your data and the last software, software after you um, put your data out there uh, into repositories, uh, into publications, and so on. And um, you can feed the data back into Link Ahead after you get, got it out for your simulations. And Linkhead also um, will uh, automate, uh, automize um, these processes. Um, maybe now a word um, about uh, agile data management. Um, so research happens usually before standardization. And um, so constant change is about to happen. And um, this not only um, is about um, data structure and formats, but also about persons, um, also personnel, also about devices that are being used, and um, also about what, what kind of um, metadata you um, want to collect. Because metadata is always um, um, important um, for searching for data, for finding data. And um, the metadata uh, determines what you can search for. And um, if you yeah, need um, very, uh, a very detailed search, you need very detailed metadata. And if you only want to look for maybe uh, the date and the person that did an experiment, you don't need that much metadata. So everything is basically changing, not only the raw data. And um, so a natural approach to, um, to navigate these um, ever-changing uh, environments is an agile approach. And the idea is, of course, start small, grow iteratively, and adapt. And Linkhead supports this in many ways. I mean, you can always add a new machine to your, uh, to your project. Uh, you can always add a new personnel, but the data model um, or your um, schema in that case um, needs to adapt to this too. And Linkerhead's um, data model uh, supports that. Um, it's not necessary to have migrations on your data every time you change your, your schema. You can integrate legacy data as it is. It can stay where it is. It can stay in the form and shape um, that it has. And um, you can keep your um, data um, formats. And uh, you don't need to bother um, about, I uh, don't need to bother about the future changes right now. I mean, uh, you, you have to cross that bridge at some point, but maybe not today. Um, maybe this is a good uh, topic for discussion later. Um, I um, would be happy to show um, in the demo how you might want to do this. So let me summarize some features that also render Link had a perfect solution for an agile approach. That is, of course, um, semantic data model and searching capabilities, which are very powerful. Um, we have um, schema um, that is defined by the users. So there is no, um, no fixed, um, let's say, experiment simulation analysis data model that you have to use, but you can define your own schema or use an ontology that you use in your community. Um, we have the web-based user interface. Um, I'll come to that. Um, we have interaction with um, external file storages. So your data files can stay where they are. 
and they will only get monitored uh, by Linkahead. We have server-set scripting and an integrated ETL system for optimization. Um, we have user management, of course, um, that you will need at your institution with a role-based access control management. And we have software libraries for many programming languages to uh, further integrate um, whatever software is already running um, in your setups. Um, here's an architectural overview. Uh, on the left side, um, we see uh, kind of the stack. We have um, the server, KSDB server, maybe nowadays a link ahead server um, in the middle as a big block. It has several um, APIs. Of course, there's a web uh, user interface, but also the REST API um, and a gRPC API for different software libraries in different languages um, that are uh, being used to integrate external software. And then we have um, the backend, that is the SQL backend for metadata that is stored directly in the server, and the file backend that um, um, abstracts away um, the file system in the local network or in, in the cloud or whatever. And um, on the right side, we see uh, the architecture um, and um, an illustration of the idea of um, the ETL um, system that I talked about, and we call it uh, the link ahead crawler. And the idea is you have um, usually files on the file system, but actually you can uh, crawl any hierarchical data. So you could um, also uh, crawl data from an SQL database or something else. And um, so this um, file system is only an example. Maybe you have three folders, experimental data, simulation data, and data analysis with different kinds of um, file formats. And the crawler would identify um, uh, based on the path, so on the hierarchy, um, and based on the um, um, particular file format, um, what kind of data um, uh, it has in front of it. And um, it also will open um, the files if possible, if you use open formats um, and um, extract metadata from it and um, identify um, value patterns that um, will tell the crawler uh, which particular um, datum um, um, it is crawling right now. So let's uh, make an example. Um, do you have um, a CSV list? So a list, sorry, a CSV table uh, with several um, columns. And um, maybe this um, CSV table is updated every day. Um, you get a new column, sorry, you get a new uh, row. And the Linkert crawler, um, of course, uh, will identify the CSV file based on your criteria. And you might um, specify that the CSV file is identified by the path where it lives. And um, so the crawler would identify the file and then update the metadata in the database um, every time you changed your file. And another example maybe is you have um, a video and um, at one day you, you decide to move it from one data storage from one file system to another. And now Linkit crawler needs to identify this file because the path changes. But for files, maybe the identifiable um, is rather um, a hash sum or some other um, properties of that file that um, makes it unique and that makes it identifiable. So um, this crawler really is flexible in, in what uh, he uses to identify data. And um, then it can insert new data because it can identify new patterns as well. Um, or update existing data in the database. Um, some examples um, what we um, do to integrate um, Link Ahead with um, external software. Um, 
we have um, some um, examples where uh, users use um, Linkhead together with the Jupyter Notebook. And a typical workflow would be that users search for data in the web interface and um, they can even copy a snippet of Python code uh, from the web interface that they would um, just uh, paste into the Jupyter Notebook. And um, you see that we um, use the KSDB um, library here. New name is as well link ahead, but um, it, it works this way as well. And um, it executes a query. It says, select quality factor from record analysis with quality factor. It's a, so, so apparently there's an analysis, analysis object um, with some quality factors. And then you can use um, the data in the Jupyter Notebook to yeah, conduct your analysis. And another integration is um, that we are um, um, deploying is um, integration with ELAB FTV. Um, we have good contact with the ELAB FTV um, community and um, also with um, the company behind it. And uh, there's another YouTube video um, which demonstrates how you can enrich data um, that is stored in ELAB FTV with um, external data, maybe from your simulations or enhance the searching capabilities if um, ELIP FTV's uh, searching capabilities are not sufficient uh, for your use cases. Um, as I said, there's a live demo. Um, I won't show it right now, but you can check it out if, if you want any time. It's uh, at demo.indiescale.com. And um, few words on deployment and licensing. Um, uh, the whole thing is open source. Um, so all components, there's no um, hidden feature that you only get if you pay someone. Um, the documentation is uh, freely available online and uh, you could deploy it on premise uh, and you could deploy it in a cloud service um, hosted by IndieScale, but actually all of our customers and everyone else we know who's using um, Linkhead right now is deploying it on premise. So cloud services currently not really being used. I guess the, um, the uh, research community likes to have the data on their own servers. And yeah, we, we know why and we respect that, of course. Um, so a little advertisement at this point. Um, IndieScale is uh, offering consulting and uh, service for deployment and of course, customization and development. So um, you can deploy it on premise and you can of course change the code yourself if you need to adapt something. But um, yeah, you can also um, let IndieScale do it for you because um, yeah, we might be um, uh, cheaper even if you let us do this. Let, let us do it. Um, so uh, some words on current activities uh, of the Linkhead um, project. We um, are part as a um, interested party of the ELN consortium. Check it out uh, on GitHub. And um, we are working on an Omero integration. Um, we will try to bridge um, Omero and um, ELAB uh, FTV in some uh, in a project and um, the idea here is of course there are several working uh, several work groups um, at an institution using these both uh, ELNs Omero and ELAB FTV and uh, yet they want to share data with each other and use data from the other group and um, Linkhead um, is a nice um, a way to, to link this data and also integrate um, legacy data, uh, integrate data from um, third-party software and so on. Um, we are part of the Fair Digital Objects community. 
Um, of course, there's nothing ready yet um, because uh, the FDO um, project is still in the phase of uh, specification, um, demoing, and so on. But um, be sure to um, have Link Ahead as one of the first tools being able to uh, produce fair digital objects and interact with them. And uh, of course, uh, what I'm working on currently, we are part of the Horizon Europe Consortium Podcast, um, um, which is uh, starting at, um, uh, at this month, actually, um, since the beginning of the year. So we are still at the very beginning of this. Um, for further resources, please visit the website of LinkEd, getlinked.com. Um, see again uh, at our demo, .com. Um, You can find the documentation online, as well as in the repository, of course, um, at docs.indiescale.com, um, the software repository where you can find actually all the software. As I said, there is no, um, no um, open core system or so, it's everything open source. Um, find it on GitLab. And uh, there are also some publications um, from myself and data from nine, uh, 2019 and something more recent um, that goes uh, into um, this agile um, um, topic a little bit more uh, in Ingrid, um, Ingrid paper. And yeah, it's accepted, but not yet published. So maybe it, it will be 2000. Um, 24, I guess. So to summarize, Link Ahead uh, focuses on researchers and their activities. Um, it has the flexible um, data model um, approach, uh, approaches an agile um, process and tries to be unobtrusive. Um, it integrates into established workflows of the researchers and it's completely open source. Oh, yeah, and that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, um, yeah, thank, thank you, Tim, for your really cool uh, presentation. And um, yeah, I'm also pretty sure that there are some some questions right now regarding um, the Link Ahead tool. Um, I only mentioned before that we do not have time for, for a full demo, of course, because this would take a lot of time to show everything. Um, would it be possible for you to just show us maybe um, a little bit about the tools, maybe the interface, so that our research, uh, our participants, uh, would see what they would deal with when they 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 use the tool? Sure. Um, can you see what I'm seeing? Yep, we are seeing the browser. Yep. Yeah. Great. So. Um, yeah, um, so this is already full screen. It is, I guess. Um, so um, this is the demo at demo.indiescale.com. Um, the link is, um, is in the slides as well. And um, the demo has a tool that is, of course, usually not part of um, the interface, but only of the demo. And um, the idea is that we try to introduce um, 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 the, the idea of Link Ahead um, from a very um, general point. Um, we, um, we, we try to um, explain how we map um, real world objects to our data model, how um, um, in, in this particular example. And the example here is from um, maybe an analysis of musical instruments. And um, one idea is um, that we um, collect uh, digital twins of the uh, instruments in here. We have, for instance, John Lennon's guitar and a nice guitar. And both of them are, of course, guitars. And um, this is a very basic schema for this. So a guitar is uh, just a musical instrument. 
um, having um, um, a Boolean electric, um, a, um, a euro price, and a manufacturer um, reference um, property. And this is how um, the data of um, musical instruments, or sorry, guitars, is uh, represented in MinCAD. And um, of course, the tour demonstrates all these um, features around the data model um, in several chapters. Here's a chapter on data model. Here's a chapter on searching and a chapter on inserting data um, using the web interface. And of course, there are some um, more um, uh, chapters that go into details um, of some, some of the features of the web interface, for instance, bookmarking. Um, maybe interesting for you guys could be um, the chapter on workflows, um, because the idea here is um, that, let me see, um, that you might want to use um, Link Ahead as a tool for quality management. Um, and you can um, attach state to your data. And in this case, it says um, in the publish life cycle, this um, musical analysis is already published. And um, if I log in, I will also see the unpublished and under review um, objects, which are hidden to the general public, but which are available uh, for um, everyone who's allowed to see it. And um, the idea, of course, is the unpublished is um, being edited by anyone in the workgroup, then it will um, change, you can change the state to review, and uh, then only um, people with the correct uh, permissions and um, the, uh, will be able to um, change it. And only those people also will be able to finally publish it. And then it becomes um, um, visible to the general public and also will be freezed. Uh, so uh, no one can change it anymore, except um, you want to unpublish it again and hide it again, and you can start working on it again. So this is um, a way to, um, on the one hand, um, allow to use Link Ahead also as a repository um, shared with the public and um, for um, uh, quality management tasks. And of course, it's, it highlights some things like the map um, used uh, for anything that is map related data, the map is here by the way, and um, it um, has another chapter on versioning. Um, so uh, Linkhead has a versioning for all of its um, entities. Um, you can access the versioning info via the web interface, and this one has actually um, a full history, and of course, um, you might jump back in time to any um, um, point in time um, uh, and any uh, uh, prior version of this um, entity. Yeah, and this is of course used for um, quality management uh, tasks as well, and also for um, yeah um, having a full lineage of your um, uh, and a full audit trail of your objects that are being stored in Linkhead. But this web interface, of course, is only a very, very general view on your data that is being stored in Linkhead. And that is OK if you um, um, want to have this very general view. But usually, the workflows uh, will be maybe you start to search for something in the web interface, but most of the work is being done under the hood um, in automated pipelines and so on. So I guess no one will actually um, use um, the edit mode to create new data in the um, web interface, maybe for changing data model, but um, the usual 
workflow is to um, yeah, automate this and hide it away in some ETL pipelines. Um, that's enough for, for a primer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so thank you, Tim, again, for, for the presentation and also for this uh, short overview about the, the, the tool itself. So I would like to stop the recording now.